Raised 3D machines have historically been a slow and steady wins the race sort of machine. I've had lots of experience with these machines. I've had the N2 Plus, I've had the Pro 2 Plus, and I've had two of their E2 machines. Recently at Formnext in Germany, I was given a peek at something they called Hyper FFF. Essentially, Hyper FFF from Raise 3D utilizes Clipper. Somebody say Clipper? To implement input shaping. I was blown away because historically, Raise 3D firmware has been closed source. Oh, but Raise 3D with the, a, a trick up their sleeve went the open source route with Clipper and I saw it firsthand at Formnext. I thought, this is wonderful. Once I got home, they reached out and they said, Joel, it was great to see you at Formnext. We're really glad you're interested in it. Do you want to see it for yourself? Boy, howdy. Before anything though, what I had to do was print something special. This helmet is for the armorer in the Mandalorian. And this is from the Hex 3D Patreon and it's glorious. If I got some uh, padding in here and kind of let it sit up here, like I, I could totally wear this. It's stuck to my cheeks. This is the way. This helmet in Raise 3D PLA was printed in four days, 12 hours, and 11 minutes. That is an extraordinary amount of time. Now I wanted to lay down some base prints utilizing default profiles within Idea Maker. So the three prints that I wanted to test out were, were this. First, the Mini Joel, Wexter's Mini Joel. The time on this was two hours and eight minutes. Next up, 3D Benchy. You know 3D Benchy. It took one hour and 32 minutes. Uh, last but certainly not least, is this. I sort of changed up things a little bit. I changed the perimeters to six and the infill to 25%. This took 14 hours and six minutes. Now it's time to upgrade the machine with the Hyper FFF stuff. Let's do it. The Hyper FFF kit comes in a well-packed box with most everything needed. Two spools of hyper speed material, one ABS, and one PLA, two new hyperspeed hot ends, and one hyperspeed auto calibrator. And that's the accelerometer. And to get all of that installed, there's actually some easy steps to follow. You gotta upgrade the firmware on the machine and make sure it's the latest and greatest. Then you install the calibrator and it gets readings for X and Y. And once those are required, you can install the new hot ends. Offset measurement prints are then printed out. Then you're off to the races. Hyper fast, but is it? So to find out, I ran the three prints that I did before, the Mini Joel, the Benchy, and the Bracket through Idea Maker's Hyper FFF profile for standard. And I ran PLA, so let's take a look. First up, Mini Joel via Hyper FFF, one hour and nine minutes. 3D Benchy, 51 minutes. Last and certainly not least is this bracket. I did change it for six perimeters and 25% infill. I think that's fair. Four hours and 24 minutes. What about a helmet? Helmets? Did someone say helmets? How does Hyper FFF affect multi-day prints? Well, I'm glad you asked. With the advent of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and P1P printers and the Voron printers and the Rat Rig printers and all of the people who put Clipper on all sorts of machines, we know lots of materials can actually be printed at high speed. I went and grabbed a random filament off my wall, Sherbert Taffy. Look at that color, it's glorious. And I know I've printed this on my Bamboo Lab 3D printers and it's printed just fine, so it should work in the Raise 3D Hyper FFF platform. So I put it in the machine and I hit go. Look at that, yes. Just like that. Oh yes. That is freaking crazy. Let's take that to the bench. You're coming with me. <laughs> Look at that! Holy cats! That's amazing. Here it is. The armor helmet from the Mandalorian from Hex 3D. Take a guess at what this printed in. 46 hours and 59 minutes. Less than two full days, four and a half days. The supports came off that one really easy. Let's have a look at how they come off here.
I am really impressed with the quality here. I want to put it on my head. Okay, that's not so bad. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, this is the way. Let's put the models side by side. They, they both turned out great. Like they both turned out great. I, I think the helmets are fantastic. I like each one of them and up close, they look the same in quality. So I'm gonna consider this a win. How about now I give you a chance to, to have a look at the models because you know I can say one thing, but you really need to take a look for yourself. So here's two mini Joels. Here, right, I'll give you I'll give you some profile, some profile there, the backside. Crazy enough, the, the Joel crotch is better on the high speed. 3D Benchy time. There we go. 3D Benchy. So this one is uh, the slow speed one. This one is the high speed one, and I can tell because it's got the brim on it still. Uh, I see some stringing over here. It appears that the high speed is of a higher quality. If you look at the port window, right there in the bow of the boat, it's really hard to see, but there's a slight droop of filament. And when you look at the same port right there, there's not. There's not the same droop of filament. You can read the words on, on the bottom of both. Last but not least, if we talk about a bracket that's kind of more in line with, I believe what a Raise 3D customer might be printing, brackets and jigs and, and very useful practical things. The high speed looks fantastic. Uh, dimensionally, it is, uh, it is the same. It's still got the, the brim on it. I just, I just took everything right from the printer. I did, I, I did experience some lift on the slow speed. Well, with the brim, the high speed did not detach from the bed. The real test for me is gonna be these helmets, right? And I, I think it did a really good job. If we think about Raise 3 d as a company catering to the professional clientele of Additive, they've now, without telling their customer they need to buy a new machine, they've provided an upgrade path for machines that already exist in the wild, and that upgrade path can allow people to print at the same or better quality faster, which means they can have a higher throughput and be more efficient with their machines. I love seeing this because it's not like Ray's went and developed something in-house. They looked at what was available on the market and they saw Clipper and the value that input shaping brings, and they utilized that. Raise 3D, a professional company turned to the open source community for a wonderful solution and implemented it in a fantastic way to really, I believe, add some value to their product offering. I think that's really cool. I'd love to hear what you think and let me know down in the comments because if you made it this far, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more and fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. <laughs> and as always, high five.